the Joe Rogan experience. So he, this is the one. He hops by, and as he hops by, the breeze makes the flag blow. Because he's in an air environment. He's not on the moon. Right. That is a weird one. Do it again. Look at this. As he hops by, he doesn't touch the flag. Now, can I do but devil's advocate? Blows. What do you call it? Steel what? Steel man. Okay. The reason why it's doing that and really on the moon is because there's micrometeorites hitting him and they're bouncing off of him and hitting the flag. What? About, is that a pretty good one? Is that real? No. I just, <laughs> oh, I thought they were trying that I, one. I was, I was trying, trying to come up with an excuse as to why the moon landings are real. Do you will, like that one? That is a good one. Micrometeorites will mess you up. Well, actually, but, Von Braun, we found publications of his. Mind you, my film cost a million dollars. It was financed by a board member of an aerospace company who builds rockets for NASA, who knows it's fake, who gave me a million dollars to produce these films as his patriotic duty to expose it. We found documentation from Von Braun that says every 24 hours on the moon, there's a 50% chance of a catastrophic, deadly error because of decompression from a micrometeorite. So they were there three days. They were 150% chance they would have been killed from a micrometeorite. Grain of sand traveling through space at 25,000 miles an hour. And he said you would have to immediately go into a cave once you landed. They never did that. He also said in writing, in order to go to the moon in one rocket, he says that cannot happen. You need three rockets, each weighing uh, each being 10 times the tonnage of the Queen Mary, or some 800,000 tons each, in order to go to the moon. And the Saturn V was 2,500 tons, not 800,000 tons. We have that in writing. He Wait, you, that was from his book, right? And what year right. was that? Uh, I think that came out uh, in 1959, and then he recanted on his math shortly thereafter by 30,000%. And now Elon Musk wants to, quote, return to the moon. And he says to return to the moon, we need to make nine fuel trips first to ferry the fuel necessary to be able to go to the moon from there. That's exactly what Von Braun said in one of my clips at Sabrell.com. You have to make multiple fuel trips to go to the moon first to a space station, and then from there you can go. Elon Musk said the same thing. But how did they do it with a, with a rocket that contained one thirty thousandths of a percent of the amount of fuel Von Braun said it would take? One of my writing. favorite, one of my favorite uh, films is the film of the lunar module leaving the moon. When, when it leaves, when the, the camera pans, and it, it looks, it lo let's film, let's show it. Let's show what 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 year was that? Which which? Uh... I think that was one of the last missions, uh, and I think you're talking about where the camera perfectly tilts tilts up, yeah, with the uh, <laughs> little model going up, yes, and of course with the delay, how could you synchronize that? Of course you couldn't. Well, you but... could because you know it's four seconds, right? Just like it's radio waves. Well, but it'd probably be more than that going through all the analog equipment. Right, but you could you could time it. You could save, you could have a five second delay. So this is it, this is it. So this is launching off the, watch this. We. And it's perfectly <laughs> tilting up with it in real time. It's just. With the remote control from NASA with the radio delay that I suspect would be more like 12 seconds. But also. Be because there's... today, if you say to someone in Atlanta talking to someone in Iraq, hey, how's it going? One. Two, three. Hey, I'm doing fine. What if they just that's put a with. On it? That's just on yeah, halfway you can around the world. You can put, the the panning is interesting, but um, you could put a timer on it. The um, the thing looking so goofy is so crazy. Like that that thing is supposed to get off one sixth Earth gravity and fly like that. How? What's it doing? <laughs> it looks so fucking fake. It looks like it's being pulled by strings. Look, it might be real. I'm certainly not an astronaut. I don't know what I'm talking about. But when I, if I, you had a guess, if you showed this to me and said, hey, do you think this is real or fake, and you didn't give me any context, I'd be like, what is this? A cheap science fiction movie? What is this? And then here it goes, like, that's what? That's leaving a planet? How's it leaving? Is that some new space technology? Where's the fire coming out of the bottom of it? How's it doing that? I mean, it just looks fake. It might be real. It might be one of those things that is real but looks fake. All right, see, so then this right? is where it gets weird because <laughs> it's not. It doesn't say the timer. It said somebody in Houston had to anticipate the timing 
ignition lift off, which I guess he could have guessed it was going to be in five seconds and just lifted the remote control. Could over. he have guessed? I have no idea what he was using. I have to look that up. I now, guess you know. could guess if you say, I'm going to launch also, if they timed in it. five, yeah. and so you know, then you have, you count ten. Because he's going to say, you know, you got a, you got like a five-second delay. And so when he gets to, like, if he counts down from ten, if he gets to five... You hit it. Well, there's a three-second delay today halfway around the world with modern equipment talking from, like, Atlanta to Iraq. Right. Three-second delay. He also could have fucked it up. Only halfway around the world with modern equipment. He has to say it. So So the guy on the moon has to say, I'm launching now, and he has to wait five seconds. It would be at least a 12-second delay, I think, and possibly more than that. The delay itself of the radio, mm-hmm. light waves there and back, plus all that analog equipment. But it is not impossible to do a 12-second delay. It's only 12 seconds. If you had a stopwatch and you counted it and you had a far enough vision where you could see the base of the lunar module, you could see it detach, and then you kind of got it as long as you got enough of a field of view in the footage. But boy, it looks fake. It's, it also looks fake in the way it's moving up. It's, mm-hmm. Watch it again, Jamie. Because it's moving up like it's being pulled by strings. Well, it looks fake because it is fake. But most things that look fake are fake. Not all of them, but the vast majority of things that look fake are fake. Now watch how this pulls up. Here it goes. It detaches. It's like... (laughs) What is that? Now here's the question. Did they practice this at all on Earth? Did they practice uh, taking off on one of those things, or could I they? I don't think they did. Because they, they couldn't. practiced landing. But here's the question. They, they yeah. couldn't, right? Because it wouldn't have the same amount of thrust on Earth because the gravity is so much stronger. So that thing wouldn't have been operational on Earth, right? Well, they had a lunar lander simulator that Neil Armstrong almost got killed in six weeks beforehand. He couldn't fly it on Earth in the safety of a tried and true environment. And that was six weeks Right, but beforehand. also, again, the gravity of Earth is much greater than the gravity of the well, moon. Well, they took that into account. It was supposed to be a simulation of it. But so it was simulation... more powerful to overcome Earth's gravity in comparison. Right. Right. Yeah. But with, so then you're dealing with a totally different machine, and you're dealing with totally different factors. Maybe it would be easy with one-sixth Earth's gravity. Maybe easy. Like, we boom, it lands, and we well, apparently, it takes off. Apparently it was. But, but one-sixth, I would like to know, like, how much thrust do you need to get off of the gravity of the moon if it's one-sixth Earth's gravity versus what it takes to get off of Earth? Like, what are those calculations, and how is that amount of force being generated by that thing? And is it? Because that's a go- that would be a really good question. Because if you can't prove that you could do that, Like, how do you do that? Well, this is one reason why NASA destroyed all the schematics, all the electronics, all the diagrams of the equipment. Because you could later prove that the lunar module, see, they claimed that the lunar module was powering air conditioning on a bank of car batteries and competed against 250 degrees outside and got it down to a comfortable 72 for three or four days. I mean, you try that at home, you know, with your car batteries. Also, and, batteries and, of t- today. Like, my right. Tesla only goes 350 miles that's if I right. drive real slow. And so they're, they're saying they powered air conditioning off much more primitive batteries 24 hours, three or four days in a row <coughs> against 250 degree outside. So this is an indirect proof. If you really went to the moon and spent $200 billion, you would never destroy the technology. But one of the clips we have is them saying that they intentionally destroyed all of the equipment to go to the moon. All the diagrams, all the hardware, all the schematics, all the original telemetry of where the rocket was at the time, and all the original videotapes. Ron Howard's grandfather warned him the moon landings were fake. He didn't listen. He wanted to make an IMAX movie. He went to NASA, said, give me all the originals so I can transfer it to HD and project it at 120 feet wide. They said, uh, give us a couple of days. And in those days, they lost every single original videotape from every single Apollo mission. Now, if you really went to the moon and spent $200 billion, the last thing you would do is destroy that technology. But if you perpetrated a fraud, that's exactly what you would do. So what is this, Jamie? I think a uh, video of them practicing. So is this uh, this is landing, but landing is that there's Neil Armstrong. It's the same machine. I so this is the one that he was practicing on that he almost died in. Look at that thing. Wow, that's crazy. 
Um, there's also an article I found about how they filmed it. They tried on Apollo 15 and 16 and failed for different reasons, and then they finally got it right on 17. So it was a timing thing. Uh, so several second delay. Here it goes. The cameras were very successful capturing the images of numerous EVAs, but while they could be controlled from Houston, it was felt that several second delay between Earth and the moon would make capturing the module's ascent impossible. So the plan was to pre-program the camera and hope that NASA camera operator in Houston Ed Fendel got his timing just right on Apollo 15. The tilt mechanism mal malfunctioned, meaning the camera was never panned upwards, and thus the lunar module rapidly accelerated upwards and out of the picture. On Apollo 16 mission, the astronauts actually parked the rover in the wrong place, so while the cameras worked perfectly, it was too close to the module, and again, once it lit up the engines, it accelerated swiftly out of picture. Happily, Apollo 17 got everything right. But what is perhaps most remarkable about looking back on it was that no one realized the significance of the liftoff at the time. Persistent rumors suggest that NASA had to pay the networks to cover Apollo 17 mission at all. And when final liftoff of humanity from the moon took place, it barely raised a mention on that evening's news reports. That's a really important point, too, because people were really tired of it. Like, they were mad that it was interrupting I Dream of Genie. I Love Lucy. Oh, that's what it was. I yes. Love Lucy. Yeah. Well, that's from Wikipedia that continually defends the fake moon landings. In fact, ah! if, you, if, you type, if you type in moon landing fraud, you don't get anything about the fraud. You get a thousand videos defending, you know, the supposed moon missions. Now, if the moon missions are real, then anyone who says otherwise is an idiot. Okay, so, so how do they defend? I, if I were going around saying... George Washington was not the first president. It was really Mickey Mouse. Do you think there'd be a thousand videos to reassure people that George Washington was the first president and not Mickey Mouse? But there's a thousand videos out there that took tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours to produce to defend the moon landings. If it's so obvious, they should speak for themselves. It has to be continually supported because it's made out of straw. That's why. So the, um, the lunar module leaving the surface of the moon – how did they practice that? If it was the first time they ever pulled that off, the first time they ever tried it, was I think that Apollo used a, 11? I think they used a simulation. But, but did they do that on the moon? Well, they couldn't practice. They right. had to so, do it they, for the first time. Did, they did, did, did it they have the ability, every single time. Did they have the ability to land something on the moon and have it take off remotely? Did they have that kind of control back then? No, I don't think so. Probably not, right? So if they did... If Apollo 11 did happen and they did take off, and that time they did it was the first time anybody had ever tried to use one of those things to get off the surface of the moon. It worked so they, every time flawlessly. With a person in it. With a person in it. With, with two people in it. Three. They, they no, two. Bombs. Two people in it, one person in the lunar orbiter. Ten landed on, ten were launched into space. Of those, six landed by humans onto the moon. First two were flown tests in low Earth orbit without a crew. That's Apollo, though. Let's talk about the AI discovery. Yeah. You know about that, right? But hold on. But before we get going. So the first two were in America? Dress rehearsal for the landing was Apollo 10 and then conducted on Apollo 11. And so um, is there footage of them trying that thing? Apollo 10? No, just, just having it launch on Earth. I'd be fascinated to see what it looks like, uh, how that thing gets into the air. I you know, because if they were able to make uh, a lunar lander that uh, Neil Armstrong got in that thing that looked very different than the ones that were on the moon, but that thing, if he's doing that to try to overcome the six times gravity that Earth has over the moon, what does that look like when they're testing that thing? Like, how much thrust does it have? And where is the engine? Where Where is the rockets that propel that thing into space? Like, where do you fit those? This is my question. You know, and so how did they explain that away? Like, what is the conventional explanation as to how that thing had the amount of power that was required to get off of the moon's gravity, get away from the moon, and fly to Earth? Well, how did they do it with uh, one thirty thousandth of a percent of the fuel that Von Braun said they had to? Why is it today, to quote, return to the moon, you have to make nine fuel trips to be able to go to the moon and return, but somehow they did it in one trip. 